Praise God. Let's stand. Turn our Bibles to Ephesians. We are looking at Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, and Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. Reading Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Read it again. For it is God which worketh in you, both to, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. Reading. And you had he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God who is rich in mercy, for his great love, where it he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ, by grace he has saved, and had raised us up together, and make us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us, through Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, this morning, we do thank you for your goodness towards us. We thank you, O oh God, for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, O oh God, for the opportunity that we can come together in a fashion like this, God. Father, we thank you for the way that you have ministered thus far. Oh God, the way that you have blessed us. And even, God, as we Come to your word. God, we know that there is something in your word that you have for each and every one of us. God, your word will not return unto you void. And so, Father, at this time, I'm praying for receptive ears, O oh God. Father, we come against the work and the plan of the enemy. We come against every distraction right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I thank you for your anointing upon your man's servant. God, I pray that your word would go forth with power. It would go forth with might this morning. God, I pray that each and every one of us who are hearing this word, oh God, would receive something from your word. God, that will change our lives, that will empower us, that will encourage us, oh God, to continue to serve you in spirit and in truth. Oh God, those who are sick in body, I pray that they would be healed this morning in the name of Jesus. Those that have any special needs, oh God, would receive don't have those needs met in the name of Jesus. Oh God, those who need salvation this morning will be saved in the name of Jesus. Father, just take total control and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. The Apostle Paul, who wrote the epistle of Ephesians, Six in our text to help the believer to understand his position in Christ. 
I am convinced this morning that there are many of us who are saved but who do not fully understand how God sees us as far as our salvation is, is concerned. We read in the book of Revelation where the word of God de declares they overcame and that is the devil by the the word of their testimony by the blood of the Lamb. And very often we tend to think that the word of our testimony is what some of the brethren did this morning when they talk about the things that God did in their life. But what John, the writer of Revelations, was referring to is our testimony about what God and the word of God says about us. That is, as we begin to confess the word of God and we begin to line up ourselves with God's word. And it is important that as Christians we know what God's word says about us. Because there are times when the enemy will attack us. And we must be able to use the word to defend ourselves against the advances of the enemy. I shared with you this morning, I'm sorry, about two weeks ago I got the news from the doctor. He says that I have cancer. What do you do as a Christian when you get news like that? And I, 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 I must be honest with you this morning. The enemy, when he has you down, he keeps you down. How, how do we respond to news like that? Your child is sick and the doctor tells you, Madam, Mister, there's nothing I can do to help. As Christians, in the face of news like that, how do we, how do we respond? I've got news for you this morning. And the, the, that news is contained in this book that we read that we call the Bible. Paul, in writing to the church at Ephesus, reminded the believers at Ephesus the life that they lived before they became a Christian, before they came into a relationship with God. And then he reminded them of their position in Christ. How does God see us in relation to his son, Jesus Christ? How does God view our relationship with him? Paul says, and you have feet quickened, who were dead in, in trespasses and sins. And God has now translated us to a place in Christ, where we are now seated with him in heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers. I have learned that every sickness, behind every sickness, there is a demonic force. But the Bible tells us that the believer is seated in Christ in heavenly places. That is our position in Christ. That is our spiritual position in Christ. I don't know how many of you have ever had the opportunity. I guess everybody has seen a war picture. Where one force is seeking to get a bunkhead or a hill. A position from where they can see the enemy when the enemy is approaching. This gives them a position of advantage. And that is why God has seated you and I in heavenly places. Because he puts us at a place where we can see the enemy. We are above the enemy, so we are able to see the enemy. But this position... Of the believer being in Christ. 
is also a practical position. We need to bear in mind that the believer doesn't fight for victory. We fight from victory. We are already in a position of victory. In other words, you and I as Christians are in a win-win situation. So positionally in Christ, God sees us in heavenly places. But this position, you and I must now learn to live out in our Christian life. So it is not only positional, but it is also ex experimental. The Christian relationship that you and I have with God must be lived out in our everyday life. It must affect us where we work, where we live, with those we come in contact with, with every single situation that we encounter. Now, if you believe this morning that God is in control of your life, that nothing happens unless God allows that thing to happen, then there must be a purpose why God would allow a situation to come into your life. I'm told that oil dung is your main, your main dish. Am I right? Yes. Now I'm sure that if you're going to prepare oil dung, you need to know what you're doing. Am I right? You need to know what ingredients you need before you start to prepare oil dung. Especially if you're going to be paid for visitor. So you need when you put on the water, when you prepare the ingredients, you need to know what, what, what time you add whatever ingredients to the pot if you're going to make that dish come out the way it's supposed to come out. And I, I believe this morning, even so in the, in, as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual that you and I must understand the word of God. That we must understand the enemy that we are fighting. That when he comes and he attacks in whatever area, we must be able to know what we need to do to defend ourselves. And that is where the practical aspect of Christianity comes in. Listen, it is easy... To come into church and sing songs of worship on Sunday morning. The crowd is here with you. You have the support of the church. But what happens when you leave here and go back out into your workplace, in your home, and the enemy attacks you and you're alone? How do you counteract the enemy? This is where, as I said, the practical aspects of Christianity comes in. I said what I said to you this morning. Is because if we're going to serve God, if we're going to live for God, if we're going to experience the practical aspects of Christianity, we need to know what the Word of God has to say about our salvation. Christ died for the entire man. The moment we accept Christ as Savior, we are changed. Our spirits are change. As we walk with God, as we live out God's word in our lives, the soulish aspect of the man is change. Paul talks about renewing the mind. And those of you who live in the computer age and who operates computer would understand what I'm talking about. Paul says that we need to be renewed in our mind. And as we read God's word, as we live God's word, it gives the, the Holy Spirit the opportunity to do a work of sanctification in our lives. You see, justification has to do with God declaring us righteous. Sanctification has to do with God making us righteous. So sanctification is instantaneous, but it is also progressive as we walk with God. The Bible says we are changed from glory unto glory. 